Hey, this is OXDF, and today I'm looking at the Hack the Boo CTF that recently wrapped up on Hack the Box. It was a Halloween-themed CTF that was beginner-focused, uh, 25 challenges, and today we're looking at one of the web challenges called Evaluation Deck. Uh, basically, for this one, I'm given, I'm given the source to download as well as a website, so let's go ahead and take a look at, start by taking a look at the website. And I got here uh, some hit points and some cars I can flip over, and it looks like I don't even really understand what's going on here, but uh, we're, I guess we're winning. No, oh, we won. So click here to restart. Um, not the best game in the world, but you know, okay. Um, you will notice I've got my Foxy Proxy up here piping all of this through Firefox, uh, through Firefox, through Burp. Um, and I have a video actually, I can, I'll try to remember to include a little tag to it on setting that up and, and even using patterns and stuff. In this case, I'm not using patterns. I have to physically or directly say use burp because it's a, a docker container out on the internet um, but because i have that all going through burp i can come in here and start to see you know here's the git request for the page itself and we can see it returns a big big old blob of stuff you know that's all the html um, we also will note that it's python which we'll see when we start looking at the source and then we can also see um let's see if we scroll down here we're getting uh, at least at least one request. I'm surprised there's not more actually. I think we have some filtered. Let's see. Uh, if I click a couple there, there's a couple more requests. Uh, man, it'd be nice to filter out these Firefox portal things. Um, but you know, we're getting each time I click on one of these things, I get a uh, ping off to this Get Health API, and it sends a current health, an attack power, and an operator, and back comes. And it looks like, in fact, it's applying. You know, 90, 32, it's subtracting 32 from 90 to get 58. So um, that's what we got without looking at the source at all. Uh, we'll come over here and we'll say we, we do have our download. And so we'll unzip. I always like to look at these first before I unzip them. So we'll do um, a dash L and there's a bunch of stuff. And I also notice that it's actually all in its own directory. So that, that's good. We can um, unzip this and we'll call uh, whatever it was here. And we'll go into the directory. And we had a handful of files. Now I'm actually going to pull up VS Code to look at this um, because it just gives us kind of a nicer interface for looking around. Um, so I got the files going on over here. Let's see, do I have Docker install? Uh, we'll we'll pass on that for now. Um, but we can start with so there's a flag.txt. Um, this is just a fake flag. Basically, what it's saying is that there is a flag, but the real flag's on the server somewhere. Um, build Docker.sh uh, is going to clear out the image web evaluation deck. It's going to then build it from the current directory. And then it's going to run it, um, exposing you know port one three three seven to the internet, um, and that'll be there. Um, the Docker file itself is where we define what's going to happen in this container. So it's starting from Python three eight Alpine. So Alpine's a really tiny image, um, and it's got Python. Uh, then we're going to install some packages. We're installing pip. We install Flask, which is a Python web framework. We're going to copy from our current you know, directory the flag into slash flag.txt. So now we know where on the system to look for the flag. It's going to be just at the root. Um, we're going to make a directory called app. We're going to switch into that directory and copy <clears throat> the entire challenge directory, which we have here. So we'll want to check that out for sure. Um, and then we're going to copy the config directory, supervisoryd.conf, into Etsy supervisoryd.conf. And that's going to basically be describing how does, how does this thing start. Um, and then, oops, let's see. Coming down, uh, we're going to expose the web port. We're going to disable the Python cache, and we're going to start Supervisory D running that comp file. So we'll take a we'll take a quick look here at the comp file, um, and this is just a normal like how are we defining a service basically. Um, we're going to run the important part here is really to look at Python app run.py. So that's we know app is what the challenge directory gets copied into. So that's where we're going to want to look for an app a run.py, uh, and we're going to be running as I believe root. Yep, as the root user. Jumping up here, we'll take a look at the challenge directory. Here's our run.py. And all it's doing is importing from application.main import app, um, which we can see here, application's a folder. And so main is, off, main is a Python file. And so it's, there's going to be an app object in that file that gets imported here. And then it calls the app.run uh, method. So we'll jump over to main. And we can see we're importing Flask. Um, and app is going to so app is going to be a new instance of Flask. This is a very common thing. Um, and there's a kind of a lot going on here, but none of this is actually super important. Basically, we're just defining these. Um, we register two blueprint um, routes, basically. We register the, the web handler and the API handler 
with these two prefix prefixes. And uh, we can see those are actually imported from right here, from app blueprints routes. And so there's a blueprints folder, and here's a routes.py, and so we're gonna import the web and the API objects. Um, the rest of these things you can see are decorators. So these are the different functions that are gonna get called. So if there's a 404 error, you know, file not found, return, you know, 404. If there's a 403 forbidden, again, you can do that. The different error handlers are basically just defined here. What we really care about here is these, these app uh, routes. So we'll jump over here and we can see those both start off with defining them. They're using this blueprint plugin for Flask. Um, I don't know a ton about that actually, but it's okay. We can kind of get an idea of what's going on anyway. Um, we have a web route, which is just slash, and it's going to return the render template index.html. So it's going to return the basic page. And then we have this get health route. Uh, it takes posts requests uh, and it calls this count. And so it says, you know, if the request is not JSON, uh, throw a 400, then we're going to get the data. We're going to get the current health. From the, the three, we're going to get really the three items that were there. And then we're going to, uh, make sure that they're all there or else return a 400. And then we're, this is the interesting part. Um, there's a couple of interesting parts, but the, the real interesting part is gonna come down here. There's one thing to say before we get here, and that is the game is not very secure. If you wanted to hack, pl hack playing the game, um, you know, if it seems the goal is to get the health down to zero, there's nothing to stop us from, uh, let's see, we'll come over here, we'll turn intercept on in burp, and we'll, let's see, restart. Oops, if I, we wanted to turn intercept up intercept on after that let's restart okay now turn intercept on and when we click on one of these let's see we should be getting intercept why are we not getting intercepted oh they're flipping over but the intercepts are coming here um there's nothing that says we can't say the current health is 100 well why don't instead of adding 32 let's subtract um 320 and when we forward this we win you know so winning the game is actually quite easy in this um but that's not the challenge. The challenge, it doesn't give us the flag when we win the game, and we have to do some more than that. So um, let's step back over here. Um, so we're taking, what we're gonna do, let's see, uh, maybe we'll make this full screen for now. Ooh, come on. Okay, so it's gonna take, it's gonna build a string, and that string is gonna say result equals int of the current health thing that we passed in, the operator, and then int of the attack power, and then it's gonna be call is, well, so that's the string. And it's gonna pass that to the compile op, um, function. And so hovering here in VS Code is actually very nice. It says compile source into a code object that can be exec, exec, eh, executed by exec or eval. So it's basically gonna, it's the same kind of thing you might see like a PYC file. It's gonna turn that into bytecode. Um, and you can see in the next line, we actually execute that. So this compile takes a file name. Now it doesn't actually matter here. It's kind of just like, Normally, when you read it from a file, you're compiling it and you know the file name, so that doesn't, and then, you know, but well, it's, it's kind of an arbitrary title here in this case. And then exec is how we're going to compile it for, there's different ways, but exec basically says you can take lots of code. Um, so then we pass the result into exec. Um, when you look at the exec function, it actually takes, um, it doesn't show us the arguments here, but it takes the code it's going to execute, but then the next optional argument is any global variables. And so that's actually what we do here is we define result and then when it, ex when, when it execs this code, result is going to get updated. And because we define it, now we can, it actually exists in result. So that's, that's a good way to keep that. Um, so, and then we return a response with the result. So how is this vulnerable? Well, let's take a look. Well, the idea is we can actually do some code injection here into this exec call. So what I want to do here is I'm actually going to take, let's see, we'll take uh, these three lines. I want to play with this. We're going to look at what we can do with that. So let's come in here and we'll come over here and say we need a new file called test.py. And I always like to put a, put our shebang in there. Bin env python3. And we're going to import sys because we're going to want to take things from the command line. Let's put our three lines here. Whoa, we did not get our three lines. Let's go back real quick. Um, Routes.py. Uh, we will skip you for now. Um, somehow I only managed to grab do it with the keyboard since my mouse is acting funny. Copy over to test.py. All right, we paste this in. We need to indent this a little. So we're going to take code, and what we're instead of you know because we control these three things, we'll call this sys.argv1. That's the first command line argument we pass to this thing. We'll call this one sys.argv2. We'll call this one. Oops, I should inside the int. This dot argv three. 
So now we've got this. We need to define result up here, just like they did in the main one. And we don't need a response object. Let's come here and we will just print the result. So now we have this nice little, um, we have this nice little Python script we wrote where we can pass, test passing in three different, the three different parts and see what we can get back out of it. So let's go here and we'll terminal, new terminal. And if we say Python test pi, if we just run this, it's going to fail because those, those things don't exist. But if we say something like 10 uh, plus 30, you can see it returns the result 40. It's kind of, that's how the game works, right? That's the intended path of the game. So the question is now, how can we use this to read a flag off the, fi off the file system? Um, and so one thing we could do, we could try to do something where we say like, you know, um, instead of putting 10 here, we say like, um, open Etsy host name for reading dot read, and then close that there. And now we have our plus 30, but the problem is this is going to fail out because this is probably going to open Etsy host name, but then, and it's going to read it, but then the result is going to get passed to the int function. And when I pass in this case, um, well, in fact, it's open Etsy host name gets passed to the int function before we even done any ex exec. And so that's not going to work because that's not an integer, right? So we really can't mess with, we need only can pass integers in this first and third argument. So we have to go back to messing with just this middle argument because it doesn't have any uh, constraints like that. So we could do something where we try to say like open Etsy host, oops, Etsy host name for reading dot read. And I'm going to want to put this in the right kind of quotes here. Um, I'll put that like that. And the problem is now what happens is it builds this string. And in fact, we can see the string right here. It builds the string result equals 10 open Etsy host name read 30. And then it tries to execute that as Python. Well, that, and that's going to fail. That, that, that's invalid syntax, right? Um, so we could try to do something where we then say, well, what if we like, can we add those together? So we put like a pluses here. But still, um, oh, there's actually no Etsy host name. Fine, we'll, we'll read the, we'll go right for the flag. I was trying to be a little coy about it, but we can, oh, or no, I'm just missing a, let's see, am I missing a, I might be just missing a, uh, what just happened? Let's see. I think I might just be missing a slash. Okay, so there. Okay, so now we have a problem because we're trying to add an integer in a string, and that's not, it doesn't like that. So what if instead of doing that, we tried like, we could do times um, would be one option because you can multiply integers by strings in uh, Python. I get a lot of stuff here. <laughs> we get a lot of hacky. That's, that's, so we're actually reading here. Um, so we could change this to a one and one and we get hacked. We read a file. Um, in fact, I bet we could read the flag here. Um, oh, I guess we'll be seeing Let's see, this would be not slash flag, but in our case, it would be dot flag. Oh, it was flag dot text, wasn't it? Flag dot text. And we, we did read the flag for testing that way. That actually worked. Um, there's other, so that, that's a valid solution. We can go read the flag like that. There's another way that we could do this even a little bit cleaner. Um, we could, instead of doing the multiply, what if we just said, um, we put a semicolon here. And now we do that. Come over here, and this isn't this by itself right now is actually not going to work. So we try this, um, do a semicolon here as well, and the string that gets generated is result equals one. Open this file and read it. So it's just a string; it doesn't get saved anywhere. And then end of command, and then the next command one. But so result gets to be one, but then that we haven't helped hasn't helped us, has it? Well, we can actually come here and say, what if we say result equals one, and the next thing we do is we say result equals this, and now we've got our flag. Um, and so that's another way we could read the flag. And so we can go back over here into burp and we'll take this thing and we'll send it to repeater. Or I guess we could afford this, but let's just turn intercept off. Let those go through and come over to repeater. And now we have our current health and we don't care what it is. Cause we're going we're to overwrite that. We have our attack power. We don't care what that is. And we can come over here and say, uh, semicolon result equals open flash flag dot text comma for reading 
dot read semicolon. And if we send this, we get our, we get the real flag. So, um, that's a kind of a well, I was gonna say quick. This is one of the longer videos for this CTF, but we we walk through a Flask app. Um, and then we looked at this eval statement and how to hack it. And hopefully with this Python script we wrote, we kind of made it a little bit clear of how it was working. Um, and then eventually we showed a couple different ways we could get the flag. Um, we could show the other way too, if we wanted to come over here and do, uh, make this a one, make this a one, get rid of this. Instead of saying semi, oops, instead of saying semicolons, we could put times here, times here. And we, oh, ooh, it didn't work. Let's see. Um, Oh, we don't need the result equals. Clear that out like that should probably work. Let's see, and we got the flag that way too. So a couple different ways to solve it. Um, hopefully you enjoyed this. Uh, thanks for sticking around to the end and I will talk to you next time. Bye.